Welcome to this video. Please look for the first comment below for the timestamps if you want to jump to a certain part. But I hope you'll find the whole video interesting. Let's get started with this one. We're going to continue working with this map that we started in the previous video. Let's introduce Lud, another son of Shem that we're going to try add to our map. So there were five sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Aram, and Lud. According to Josephus, Lud founded the Ludites, which are now called Lydians. So we have a kingdom to work with. This is a timeline for Lydia. There's not many entries for this kingdom. It says 1200 BCE, Lydia arises as a Neo-Hittite kingdom. So the Hittites would have been the supreme power of the region. And then as this Hittite empire starts to crumble and fall, then Lydia starts to arise. But it's still quite a long time before Lydia really comes onto the historical record with moments in history where they were key to what was happening at the time. This period from 1185 BC to 687 BC is very interesting because it says there was a Heraclid dynasty that was ruling over Lydia. So descendants of Hercules. And we've been speaking about where mythology meets history. So we'll speak about Hercules in this video. I just want to read something from this page on the Medes. So we get an idea of what was happening and what period we are looking at for this Lydian kingdom when they started to play a major role in this uh, ancient period. So this is speaking about Assyrian dominance over the Medes and then the Babylonians and the Medes joining together to conquer or destroy the Assyrian Empire. And then it says that after the fall of Assyria, there were four major powers which would have been the Medes, Babylonia, Lydia, and Egypt. So Lydia, one of the four major powers at this point of history. But now we're going to try to think about where was this kingdom of Lydia or where were the descendants of Lud? In the Bible, we do have a, a word called Ludim or a name Ludim, which has been connected to Lud. But there's some confusion because we also have Genesis 10, 13, where it says that the Ludim were descended from Mizraim. So is it from Mizraim or is it from Shem? But it says the biblical scholar Victor P. Hamilton believes that the available evidence suggests that the Ludim are the Lydians. That would be very important because we do get information to say where the Ludim were living or inhabiting. It says, according to Josephus, their land was in Libya, which was of west, sorry, which was west of Egypt, near the tribes of Put, in the land of the Moors, towards the extreme west of Africa and the Atlantic Ocean. So we are now thinking about our map. We have this connection of Lud, or the Ludim, in the region of Libya, or Put. Let's continue with this. It's very interesting. Pliny in his Natural History mentions the river Lud along south of the Atlas Mountains near the river Put. So we've got the Atlas Mountains to think about. And then we have another idea about Tunis and Tunisia for the Ludim. So let's just look at the, the Atlas Mountain Range. So we know where we're looking. North Africa coming towards the Iberian Peninsula. If we use this map to think about this, because it has Libya here, and then it also has Tunisia, and we have the Atlas mountain range. So this is the region which is, is being connected with, with the Ludim. But there is confusion with the Ludim, because it says, it reminds us again here, don't confuse this with Lud, son of Shem. But we do have biblical scholars who think or suggest that the Ludim are the Lydians. So very interesting because now we have something to think about for our map. We could be looking for 
Lud, son of Shem, in this region of North Africa, if they are connected with the Ludim. So let's continue to research and see what else we can discover for Lud. Can we find more to support this connection with North Africa and the Atlas mountain range? Let's see what we've been presented with for Lud, son of Shem. And we're going to notice that some things just don't seem to make sense. We were using this map in the previous video for, if we say the traditional biblical scholarship for the three sons of Noah. Notice, if you can see here, we have Lud. And then we have another placing for Lud here. We'll, we'll talk about that when we do our interpretation of the Book of Jubilees. But what's interesting is what it says on this page for Lud, son of Shem, on Wikipedia. It also is speaking about what the Book of Jubilees is saying. I just want to read this part here. It says, In all these cases, Lud's portion seems to refer to the entire Anatolian peninsula west of Mesopotamia. Let's go to this map, but enlarged. So what they're saying is that this region was the portion of Lud. So if you say most of the modern day country of Turkey falling for Lud, but then straight away you see things that don't make sense because we've got Japheth coming across the territory here. So how can it be territory of Lud, but then also you have Japheth and notice on this other map, where we have Lud, we also see Meshach and Tubal, two sons of Japheth in this region. So this, this doesn't seem to make sense because they're saying that this territory belongs to Lud. How can you then have sons of Japheth in the same region? And another thing we noted was it seems to be very congested in this region with all these different suns put in this in this region is it realistic so this is what we're going to be thinking about is what we presented with and it is important because we're thinking about the historical kingdom of lydia so that's where we're going to be told we see here Lud, Lydians, that this is where the kingdom of Lydia was. And we must remember that this is a biblical interpretation. So people that are interested in the, the Bible and thinking about the, the descendants of Noah, trying to put it on a map. So this is a biblical interpretation, but there are kingdoms on the historical record like Tabal and Mushki, which are being connected with the sons of Japheth because of the similarity of the names, Tubal and Meshach. So this could be a reason why we have these, these sons of Japheth in this region so that it makes sense with the, with the historical record. But when you actually see it on the map like this, then is it not fair to say that it doesn't seem to add up how when we're looking at these interpretations, they're saying that it seems that Lut's portion refers to the entire refers to the entire Anatolian peninsula west of Mesopotamia, but on the same page with the map they're showing, you've got Japheth coming right across that territory. What do you think about that? Does it actually make sense? Is it realistic? Let's do our own interpretation from the Book of Jubilees with Lud and see if we see something different. As we try to interpret the Book of Jubilees for the portion of Lud, 
do we need to be careful of bias? I would like to speak about that first. If you think about the information that we've been reading so far, we thinking about looking for LUD in this region. But now that we have that in our mind, when we try to interpret the Book of Jubilees, do we have to be careful that we don't try force the information to fit the way we want it to? Let's have a look at the Book of Jubilees. We're actually going to start with one of the sons of Japheth, Tubal, because it speaks about Lud in this portion. And for Tubal, there came forth the fifth portion in the midst of the tongue which approacheth towards the border of the portion of Lud, to the second tongue, to the region beyond the second tongue, unto the third tongue. So it's not easy to interpret this. What does it mean by tongue? Could that be a body of water? Is it a peninsula? I want to explain the way I've interpreted this in the past. I want to go to the book of Jasher. It's very interesting. It speaks about the children of Tubal dwelling in Tuscana and their boundaries reaching the river Tibru. So if we interpret Tuscana as Tuscany and the river Tibru as the river Tiber, then we know we're on the Italian peninsula because we have the region of Tuscany and we have the Tiber River. And the book of Joshua is saying that this was a boundary, a natural boundary between the children of Tubal and the Kittim, the Kittim son of Javan. And it speaks about war between the children of Tubal and the Kittim. So this means that we should be looking for Tubal on the Italian peninsula, according to the book of Joshua. And then it's interesting when we look at the interpretations for Tubal by different scholars, we notice how they've got Tubal for the Italian peninsula. Most of these examples we see Tubal here. And another one here. So that's the way I have interpreted it in the past, is thinking about this Italian peninsula, is it coming towards the portion of Lud? And then when it says in the midst of the portion, does that mean that they not inhabit, they're not inhab inhabiting the, the, the whole territory, but part of the territory? And then we read about how the Kittim were sharing this region with Tubal, according to the book of Jasha. So that looks very strong. It makes sense. But are we, or should I say, do we have to be careful that we don't have a bias which is leading us that way? Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas or thoughts about this, um, this portion for Tubal, if you, if you maybe see something that we're not seeing. And while we're speaking about Tubal, I just want to show you these kingdoms on the historical record that we mentioned. So on the historical record, we have a kingdom of Tubal. And in this part here, I just want to read this part here. It says, during the reign of Sargon II, an Assyrian king, Tubal entered in an, alli an alliance with the Mushki. So this is referencing Mushki. And biblical scholars connect Mushki with Meshach. So this could be saying an alliance of Tubal and Meshach to counter Assyria. Just thought it's interesting that we have these kingdoms on the historical record. And if we go back to the map, remember how we said it seems very congested in this region, the way they've got it laid out here with Tubal and Meshach. But if we're using the Book of Jubilees, and we can trust the Book of Jubilees, notice they've got Tubal here for the Italian peninsula, and then Meshach coming towards the Iberian peninsula. So is this the region that we should be looking for Tubal and Meshach? And will that have an impact on actually the 
the historical record with these kingdoms to Baal and Mushki. And that'll also have an impact on, well, it could have a major impact on how we see the, the Assyrian Empire. So it's very interesting, but lots of implications. It's very important to study. Let's get back to the Book of Jubilees because it also speaks about the portion of Lod when it speaks about Juvan, another son of Japheth. And for Juvan came forth the fourth portion of every island and the islands which are toward the border of Lod. I just want to read this one to try to be fair for this interpretation. Notice how they have Juvan here for the modern day country of Greece and they have Lod here. So that could work for the way they have it laid out here. But remember how we've already read from the book of Jasher about the Kittim being on the Italian peninsula. And notice they've also got Tarshish here. Kittim and Tarshish, two sons of Javan. So do we really understand the territory of Javan? I'm, I want to leave that one for now because we, otherwise we're going to be trying to put too much in one video. But let's read, to finish this part, the actual portion for Lud. And there came forth for Lud, the fifth portion, the mountains of Ashur, and all appertaining to them, till it reacheth the great sea, and till it reacheth the east of Ashur, his brother. When it says the great sea, this could be referring to the Mediterranean says the Great Sea, a biblical name for the sea that lies between the European and African continents, better known as the Mediterranean Sea. So this is important for the, for the portion for Lod. And again, if we go back to this map, we can say that that works for this map with Lod and we see the Mediterranean Sea. But it also could work for this map because we have Lod by the Mediterranean Sea. But now we have to really think about what it's saying here. Speaking about the mountains of Ashur and reaching, what it says, it reacheth to the east of Ashur, his brother. This is, a, this is where it gets difficult because we can't say that that fits or works here. Because we have Ashur in this region, you would say that Lud was to the west. So this is why it's been difficult for Lud, and I've always had it with a question mark because still trying to work out all these details. But if we go back to the traditional map, I'm not sure it really works on this either because here we have Ashur, and when the way they have Lud here, this wouldn't be to the east of his brother. But we did mention they have another Lud here. I don't know if that would be if you could say that's to the east of Ashur either, but. I don't want to, to try to do too much in one video because I think we have to be patient and also there's lots of things in, this, in, these, um, in these descriptions and these details that the Book of Jubilees gives us that I'm not sure about and I still don't understand. I think we actually have a lot to go on already with this video. We've got a lot of information for Lud, and as we go further in this video, we'll see how this layout can be strengthened. And maybe we just have to just wait and be patient to see how this map could be proven to be accurate, even with all the... Um, if you want to say these discrepancies, all these things that don't quite seem to work at the moment, with Lud being toward the east of his brother, Ashur, and also what does it mean by the mountains of Ashur? I do have a few ideas, but I think there is more information that we're going to cover in this video that could actually make this link with Lud in this region stronger. Let's get...
in this part we're going to see if the Bible can shed a light on this picture. Should we be looking for Lud, son of Shem, in this region of North Africa? Or should we be looking towards the modern-day country of Turkey? We're going to read first from the book of Isaiah 66.19 I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survived to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations. This one's very interesting because it mentions the Libyans alongside the Lydians, famous as archers. So does that support what we were reading about the Ludim in Libya? And then also interesting how it first says Tarshish, because on this map, we notice these different theories about Tarshish. But both of these are very near to the territory of North Africa. So is that what it is describing here? That these nations are going to be in close proximity with the Iberian Peninsula and also North Africa? Because one of the strongest connections for Tarshish is the Iberian Peninsula with the semi-mythic semi-mythological kingdom of Tartessos. Let's go to another book. This is Jeremiah 46.9. Come up ye horses and rage ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. So again, we have the Lydians mentioned alongside the Libyans, but now also the Ethiopians, that's interesting. And another reference to the fame of the Lydians with the bow. So we are seeing these connections with Lud and the Libyans. So that's important that we are getting support from the Bible with what we've been learning in this video. But is it Lud, son of Shem? And also, what about the actual kingdom on the historical record? Because it's not just about where was Lud, son of Shem. It also can impact the, the way we look at the history with the kingdom of Lydia. Are we actually looking in this region for the kingdom of Lydia? But then that's going to impact the history. Because remember we spoke about this Heraclid dynasty ruling over Lydia and this history of these four great powers. And in this entry here, it speaks about a battle between the Medes and Lydia. So if we are looking at a different picture for Lud and the Lydians, then the other history also would have to make sense for, for this picture to work. So this is where it gets interesting because this one source could bring it together. This is the, the historian called Salust, the war with Jugurtha. Let's, re let's read this part. But when Hercules died in Spain, as the Africans believe, the men of diverse nationalities who formed his army, now that the leader was gone, and since there were many on every hand who aspired to succeed him, soon dispersed. Of those who made up the army, the Medes, Persians, and Armenians crossed by ships into Africa. So according to this source, if it's correct and true, we would have Persians and Medes in this region of North Africa. So that's very interesting because then the, the picture and the history could start to, to work. But then what about the fact that it speaks about Hercules? The way this is written, are we thinking about Hercules as a real historical figure or person? Because on this timeline, it speaks about descendants of Hercules ruling over Lydia. So then we can start to see how we seem to have many of these elements coming together where we do have Hercules connected with this region as well. We also 
learns about a tribe in this region of North Africa being connected with the Persians, a tribe called the Parusi. This is also very interesting how this could tie together. A tribe called the Parusi. And on this page, it speaks about another Bible verse. Let's read this. This is very interesting. This is from the book of Ezekiel. It says, The men of Perez, or Perez, the common version reads Persia, and Lud, and Put, were in thine armies. So again, we're seeing another book or verse from the Bible mentioning Put alongside Lud. But now we get the Persians. It's very interesting if we think about this. With Jeremiah, it was the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Lydians. And now in this book of Ezekiel, it is the Persians, Lud, and Put. And then this, read this, this is important, this part. These Perez thus joined with the Put, or Mauritanians, and the Ludim, who were nomads of Africa. The Septuagint and the Vulgate understand the Lydians may be reasonably supposed to belong to the same region. So it's actually saying that the, the Septuagint and the Vulgate understand this as the Lydians. So is it now becoming more conclusive that we should be thinking about Lud, son of Shem, in this region, but that it's also the Lydians? And does that affect the, the way we actually look at the history and these events that have happened in the past. So I think that was all I wanted to read from here. So very, very interesting how we get historians speaking about the Persians in this region. Then we also do actually have a tribe called the Parusi, which is which has been connected with the Persians. And the Bible, in different books in the Bible, it's speaking about these nations, put Lud, sometimes Persia, sometimes Ethiopia, as being in, in league with each other. So is it like a North African confederation of nations? So what do you think about this so far? Because the information and also the Bible seems to be supporting this picture. Let's learn something interesting about the kingdom of Lydia in regards to civilization, because we've been speaking a lot about civilization in this playlist. Why did civilizations start using coins as money? It says coins appeared in the Mediterranean region for the first in Lydia in the 7th century BCE. It says this is the first Lydian coin made of electrum, a natural mixture of silver and gold. Crudely, uh, sorry, crudely shaped and featuring a royal symbol of the lion. And this is the coin. So very interesting. And now it says why coins were an innovation. Because they replaced the metal ingots that were used in trading. And the coins are going to be much lighter, smaller, and more easily, more easily portable than these large ingots. Just a few other interesting things here. It speaks about the creation of the shekel in the 3rd millennium BCE in Mesopotamia. That could relate to that debate of looking for the origin of civilization, with some scholars saying we should be looking to the Sumerians. And this last one, the Sumerian temples were the first banks. So that is that seems a bit of a conflict of interest, maybe. Now this this next part we're going to look at, I found a bit disturbing while I was trying to research for this video. This is creationwiki.org for Lud, son of Shem. Let's read this part. Well, we've already read about what Josephus says. Let's go to where it speaks about Herodotus. It says, and the account of Herodotus informs us that they were a white people. 
so this page saying that the the Lydians were a white people and then they give us a reference so I click the reference shows us where to look so then I went to find this source now if this is the right page when I read this I couldn't find anything about appearance it doesn't say anything about the appearance of these kings. So that to me is quite disturbing because why are they saying what they're saying here? Is that not misleading? Because the source that they're quoting doesn't seem to say anything along these lines. And that can relate quite strongly to what we've been talking about in this playlist. This could also be very important and connected to the study. This is the book of Obadiah 120, and it speaks about the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, an Israelite captivity in Sepharad. We're not going to cover this in, in this video because we've already done a lot. And also we can maybe look at this in an upcoming video. But it's now very interesting when we think about Lud, son of Shem, because when we first started this study, this exploring, I saw Lud maybe as a, a bit of a weakness to our picture, always having it with a question mark. But now it's starting to look a lot stronger if we think about this video, where we even have some things that we leaving out that we're going to come back to. And we start to get an idea for this territory of Shem. And as we keep building and adding to this, does Lud start to add support to the brothers also being on the continent? But I still think there's a lot to learn. We haven't definitively placed Lud in a region yet. And is there a difference between Lud, the Ludim, and the actual kingdom of Lydia? So I'm still not sure about that. Let me know what you think about this video. I think it's been a very interesting one. And if you've got any information or anything that you've learned you'd like to share that could help, we would appreciate that. Thank you for watching this video. And I look forward to seeing you in another one.